Okay. Welcome everybody to our official book launch for the JGU Press, Weaving the Tapestry. We start off with gratitude to Hashem for giving us the wisdom and the strength and the team who made this happen. I recognize that we have an amazing JGU Press team. Without them, we would not have these books for Jewish women and girls and families to be inspired for all generations. This book, Weaving the Tapestry, is a journey exploring women of valor through history. And there are stories of women in the Torah and women of today, women who lived lives that we want to emulate and their loved ones have contributed and dedicated those stories in this book. The book was supposed to really come out in 2020, and that was the plan. And of course, Hashem knows the right timing for everything. So in One is with Hashem, we, we want to, we, we recognize that we, together, we made this happen, and we're in oneness right here. That's our oneness, <laughs> bringing us all together to celebrate this milestone, which really began years ago. So actually, I want to start off with inviting one of our staff members who actually taught this curriculum back in 2004. And we decided to teach the Aishas Chayel to the girls at camp and Leah Karras was a counselor, her first time being a counselor. And yeah. she remembers teaching the book today, many years later, it's almost, could you believe it? Almost 20 years later, really? Yeah. Leah is the book designer and a third editor because she's not just a book designer. When she catches me forgetting something, something is off. She notices everything. Your attention to detail just blows my mind. And, and not only that, but she's Baruch Hashem today, a woman of valor with her own beautiful family, children, a husband that she supports. And we want to invite her, recognize her to just share a few moments of what it felt like to see this process from beginning to completion. Leah Karras. Yeah. So yes, as Nahama mentioned, um, the first time I interacted with this text and curriculum was when I, the first year I was a counselor in JGR. Um, and at that point, the text was just, you know, a word document with some questions, answers, th you know, thinking, uh, prompts, discussion topics for the girls to discuss. Um, and I did it with my bunk in camp. And then it was probably to 2020, 2019, 2020, when the idea came to actually publish it into a beautiful book and to collect the stories that represented each one of the verses of Aisha's Kyle. So then I started working on the designing then, and it has gone through many, many, uh, you know, revisions and iterations and, you know, realizations of what's going to be the most powerful, most beautiful, most inspiring way to present this. So it's so exciting to have it actually in my hands, <laughs> you know, three, three years later. Um, and one of the themes, of course, of Aisha's Chayel is how the woman of valor uses her talents to serve Hashem, because it's not, it doesn't really talk so much about how she spends the, all day praying or learning. She's, you know, um, kneading dough, she's weaving tapestries, she's clothing her family, she's out, you know, like a merchant ship, she's doing all these activities and through all of her daily hands-on activities that she is 
so skilled at, that is how she builds her home, a home for Hashem. So that was just really meaningful to me as a graphic designer, as a business owner, and also a mother, um, of course, first and foremost, a mother, um, that I'm, I was able to use my talents to work on something that hopefully will inspire women and girls to use their own talents to serve Hashem as themselves and then as the foundation of their home as well. So I hope everybody enjoys it. And, and you want to read your sure. tribute? Okay, sure. Let's see if I can find the page. And Leia also put in a tribute for her mother and grandmother. I should I should do a little uh flip through while we're, we're so just, yeah we're showing them a little bit the and <laughs> I know which page it's it is in, um, <laughs> cook oh, okay. in the in the chapter that her children her, oh, so yeah. Leah put in a praise for her mother Oof, there we go right oh, here is that it yes. So dedicated in honor of the Aishas Chayals before me, my grandmother, Ruth Krieger, Shetechia, who's, who chose a life of Torah and mitzvahs, planting seeds of Yiddishkeit for many generations to come. And my mother, Evelyn Krieger, Shetechia, whose dedication to Jewish education instilled in me a love of Judaism. So I wanted to recognize, of course, the generations of, of my, uh, I guess, tapestry of, of Jewish involvement um, and I hope that my daughters will also enjoy, you know, reading this book as the next generation. And now Leah's daughters are in JGR and they too are becoming bat mitzvah. Yeah. <laughs> and now I ask another member of our JGU press team, Susan Axelrod, who joined us from Arizona for this special Grow Women's Retreat. And Susan saw the vision from the beginning. I see the vision and I see a person in Nahama who has the deepest passion, the deepest commitment and the greatest ability to implement a vision. So when I met Nahama, uh, I started hearing about your work and I was listening deeply and saying, there could be greater opportunity here. And then the more we worked together, the more and more it went deeper and deeper and deeper. And I knew uh, very quickly that there was an opportunity to what I call codify the work instead of having them be what Leah just described, which was a piece of paper with a staple on it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I knew that uh, the organization that we co-founded, Jewish Girls Unite, could also support a press because I believe that women have something to say and share. And I want us to be confident and conscious of being the ones to pass our messages down. We received messages, Leia just shared about her mother and grandmother, and I think that we have an opportunity. And as a result, um, this, like you have no idea, <laughs> this book is absolutely um, really a, a volume of wisdom and passion and commitment and just utter devotion. So um, myself, um, I had my own stapled pages of some work that I had done. And um, when I said to Nahama one day, several years ago, um, oh, I'm gonna teach my own curriculum, my own material. She then said to me, we're gonna make you a book of my material. And I said, what? And she said she was going to, with Leah, gift me um, a book. And it became my first book. And so I became one of the JGU Press authors. And um, then Leah Karras designed um, these books. 
and uh, I can't open it now, but Leia designed my books and they're available for sale. 100% of the proceeds of my books now go to support JGU. And so I just want to say that if you have a book in you, JGU Press can support you. I'm looking around here at the room of ladies. If you have a book in you, JGU Press is ready and available to support you. So finally, in this book, uh, Nahama said to me, would you like to make a tribute? And I said, yes. And so my mother-in-law, who was called Bubby, um, made challah all my life. I was in my in-law's family for 40 years. I came in when I was 20 or 21 years old. And so um, there evolved a story having to do with challah, or as in my in-law family, we called it chali. And um, as we realized the benefit and blessing of sharing these stories, Nahama said, would you write up the story for Cold Life? Sorry, for Cold Life. And it got published. And so um, the story of Bubby's uh, Hala is in uh, this book as well. This is my tribute. And that's my own table, a picture of my table. Um, because um, once Bubby no longer became able to make the Hali, Nahama stepped in and started uh, helping us with the delicious homemade challahs. So I want to invite you to consider your own message, your own wisdom, and maybe you can be in a book or maybe you can have your own books. So thank you so much. And this Shabbos, Susan baked her own challah. I did indeed the first time ever. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, for always encouraging me to share the gifts from Hashem with others. And we're going to call Hannah Cotter, who in 2020 took on the job <laughs> voluntarily to illustrate each verse. So I'll show you a couple examples. She illustrated each verse as, and she was also a JGR art teacher. This is an example. So each verse begins with a framed picture by Hannah. Uh, here's, I love this one, that the Jewish woman, she plants a vineyard. Here's another example. So, so I'm going to ask Hana to come up to share a couple words about your experience as an artist for this book. And now in 2023, it's actually printed. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hannah Cotter, a friend of Nahamas. And uh, Susan and Leah and Nahama are hard acts to follow. So um, I don't have much prepared to say, but I will say that I remember uh, Nahama feeding me all the ideas for these pictures. And um, there, well, how many were there, Nahama? 20? About 20? Yeah, 20 pictures. So I did them and uh, it took a while. And then I gave them to Nahama and she rejected them all. <laughs> Remember all of them, and so I redid all of them, but I had nothing better to do, anyways, um, because I retired. So it was um, a pleasure to work with Nahama. I've known her for many, many years, and I um, uh, started well, I first met her teaching art at uh, one of the synagogues, and she had just, I think, she had just begun, wasn't it? When you just began your um your bat mitzvah program for the yeah. girls, right? And um, one of the girls that I was teaching was her daughter, Hannah. And Hannah, uh, I recognized right away as a, a fantastic artist. And I wish she, she was here now because she's done so much for this organization as far as teaching the girls now. So uh, again, you know, as far as book goes, they were all ideas that Nahama fed me, you know, and I just came up with ideas twice. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> I, I have to apologize that 
the art was done twice. I have to apologize to Leia Karras that she designed the book three times. The third try was the right was the one that you see. So no one will ever know what went behind this. And now I want to also invite Sipora Protus, who also edited the book five times, <laughs> together with another three editors. But she not only edited, I would take, we would learn a concept together, and then I would ask her if she could summarize it and write it up. And we actually restudied the whole Aisha Schael because the first time around, I felt like it was on a level for girls. This is also for teens and women. And so we added many more commentaries and connections to the verse. And sometimes we would like, just like go, chew it over and over, right? And we studied this for an entire year, not this year, previous year. And I'm really grateful that it didn't come out in 2020 because learning it over and going back into the commentaries really clarified and made this book what it is. So I asked Tsipora, who was going to come today, but we recognize Hashem had other plans. So she is on Zoom and going to share her experience as a camper and now a member of the JGU Press team. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see this group and nice to be part of it, even virtually. Um, I'm Sephora, and I'm one of the contributing researchers, writers, and editors to Weaving the Tapestry. And I'm a former JGU student, and I volunteered and staff with Team JGU for over five years now. But I'd like to start by thanking Hashem, God, and our global community, our partners, and our press team for helping us all finally realize this book that Mrs. Labor's holding in her hands. It illustrates the beautiful purpose of Jewish womanhood with narratives of historical and contemporary Jewish women, women we know and love, while inviting the reader to express godliness in her own daily life through discovering and engaging her positive qualities. In the process of developing this book, I learned that Aisha Schail, a woman of valor, is not just a song praising women reserved for Friday Shabbat night. But I realized it's also a framework for a praiseworthy way of life. And I think it's telling that Aisha Schail culminates with the verse, Isha Yirat Hashem Hiti Talal, a God-fearing woman, she should be praised. I think fear is a misnomer because Yira derives from the Hebrew root meaning to see. And as you delve into a copy of this book, you'll see that a woman who sees Hashem, who makes him relevant in the events of her daily life, her weaving, her baking, her nurturing, her family, that woman is praiseworthy. Indeed, Hasidus describes this uniquely feminine approach as working within nature and with others to nurture and bring out their inherent godly potential for growth and goodness and holiness. Aisha's Chayel, I think, helps us recognize Hashem's involvement and loving providence as we conduct our daily lives in accordance with his will laid in the Torah and mitzvahs. As a result, we can harmonize all aspects of our lives toward the goal of growing in our oneness with Hashem and making him welcome in our world. Following this launch, it's my wish that this book inspires our readers to spread more goodness and kindness from the homes outward through daily connection with Hashem to elevate our world. Please join us in discovering the Aishas Chayel within you while diving into a copy of this book. May we all grow as women of valor and merit to fulfill the praiseworthy mission of transforming this world into a home for the divine to thrive. Thank you. Wow, Tsipora, you just encapsulated everything I would have wanted to say better than anyone could say it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your devotion, for really living these ideals and for sharing with us today. So you met one of our editors, you met the designer, you met the global strategy advisor, you met the artist. Wow. And now I'd like to invite a very special partner in our mission to bring these books into the world, um, to grow 
Jewish Girls Unite and the Grow Connection Network. And one of the stories in the book is called Legacies Intertwined, and it connects very special women in my life, my mother-in-law, Mrs. Labor, so we're going to ask you to come up, and her story and her talent as a woman of valor who's always weaving is connected with our dear friends, Mickey Massey and her daughter, Julie, who's also a part of our Grow Network. And they are going to share a story called Legacies Intertwined and how their bubbies are connected to their actions today as women of valor. Okay, so. Hi, everybody. Speaking of weaving, beautiful, beautiful, well, this beautiful hat and how I am enjoying it. So thank you. And thank you to everyone that's here and all the beautiful women I've met this weekend. I have grown to love you all and look forward to being you being part of my life. Okay, so this is a tribute to my bubby, Esther, Julie's great, great grandmother. grandmother. And you'll see how um, bubby Gittel fits in here. One day during a visit, Mickey and her friend Nahama Labor recalled Mickey's grandmother, Bubby Esther. Mickey retrieved two garments that Bubby had lovingly made for her family and pre presented them to Nahama. She made a request. So I had these crocheted dresses that my grandmother had made for Julie when she was a baby. And I wanted to repurpose them into something. My daughter-in-law, so Gitzel recounts, my daughter-in-law, Nahama Diener, called one day asking if I can make a special project. Her friend Mickey had handmade garments from her grandmother and was wondering if someone could repurpose the yarn for a gift for expecting a new grandson. So my other daughter, Lori, who's not here, was pregnant with my grandson, Jonah. Um, Nahama thought I could figure out what to do, although I was unsure of what to expect. As Gitzel began to unravel two crocheted pale blue and white children's vests, a sense of awe overwhelmed me. This is Gitzel saying it. I realized my hands were touching the same yarn that my grandmother had touched. Bubby Esther, a Holocaust survivor, had touched over a half a century ago. How amazing it would be to be part of the continuing legacy. Fortunately, I salvaged plenty of yarn to knit into a beautiful baby blanket. It was emotional for me to deliver to Mickey shortly before her grandmother's birthday on March 15th and to learn more about her. I was struck by the fact that my grandmother, Sarah Reitman, who introduced me to the art of knitting, she used to sew and knit clothing for her grandchildren. And on Hanukkah, she would gift her family with aprons that she made from extra material. By reweaving those threads into a new blanket, I experienced a deep joy and appreciation for this God-given talent that has been, been bestowed upon me to share with others. And another divinely coordinated event unfolded about one month later when the Hamadina dropped Mickey to deliver freshly baked babka, as Bubby Esther was known, we known for this confection. The Hamadina warmly remembered, we're kindling Bubby Esther's, okay. oh, flame, sorry. <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, the visit co coincided with an auspicious time, Mickey revealed. I am lighting a candle tonight for Bubby Esther's yurt site. Bubby Esther is with you. She is with all of us, responded Nahama. Today, I light my Shabbos candles with Bubby Esther's inherited candlesticks. My grandmother was a uh, Holocaust survivor, and so was my mother, and she somehow smuggled these beautiful candlesticks um, from Czechoslovakia. I'll show you a picture. Oh, oh, thank you. And um, I still light them. My mother gave them to me when I was married for 10 years to my husband, Norman, and uh, it was a beautiful gift, and I cherish those immensely. Um, 
A woman of valor seeks out wool, wool and linen, and her hands work willingly. From Bubby Esther to Bubby Labor, their good deeds go are intertwined threads, weaving the tapestry of our legacies from generation to generation. So here, I don't know if you can see it. Here's a picture of my grandson, Jonah, and he's on the blanket. And what, what um, Bubby Labor was able to do was she saved the original crocheting that my grandmother did and framed the edge of the blanket. So she undid the weaving, but she kept the, the original uh, crocheting intact so she could bind the edges of the blanket. So it is like so special. And she made a little hat and I have it in my sunroom. Nobody's allowed to use it. So it's like right there in my sunroom on display for me to, you know, love all the time. And Julie has a picture of the candlesticks. That's Julie, my daughter, my older daughter. And those are the candlesticks and they're pretty big. They're probably 12, yeah, like 14. I don't know how she got them and they're sterling silver and they're beautiful. And I really appreciate Bobby Labor for doing the most, the most beautiful mitzvah and how wonderful we are to have, um, you know, the legacy. Of oh, that in our thank you. in our thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And when we share, when we share these stories, look what happens. All of our legacies are intertwined and weave the most magnificent tapestry that we're all experiencing right here. And this is the inspiration for the name of the book, Weaving the Tapestry. Thank you, Women of Valor, from Bubby Esther, Bubby Labor. Our tapestries are all being woven together with our master weaver, Hashem. And so this retreat was just that, women, joined together and what do we do we told our stories we weave them together with a few tears lots of laughter and we all became connected to each other's souls and our legacies and we really felt our bubbies here something really really special we lived these stories that are in the book and um i'd like to invite Esther, Esther Grossman is also part of my legacy as a student of my own father. This Shabbos, we sang a niggin, a melody. And around the table, Esther was the only one that knew the niggin. And we were singing it together, teaching it to everyone else. And then Mickey said to Esther, how do you know that song? Where did you learn it? And Esther answers. I learned it from Nechama's father. I was a student and oh Nechama's, <laughs> Nechama's father, um, as, a, as a teacher no. at the school at that time was called Nechama mm Yadis. -hmm. He uh, would take us, aside from teaching in the classroom, he would take us across the street, up the stairs, up the flights to uh, Nechama's house and into the living room where there was a uh, record player and he would introduce us to nigunim and to wordless melodies that touch the soul and so he would uh, play it he would have all of us uh, students were sitting around he would say close your eyes and listen to the story of the nigun listen to the um the emotion of it how does it touch your soul and so it was an introduction in to into how to attune our nishamas, how to attune my soul to music and uh, really connect. And I've connected with Nugunim ever since. So this Shabbos, we wove together, we grew. And I'm, you have your poem? Yeah, Would you I, like? do. Okay. I do. And yeah. Esther um, composed the most magnificent tapestry with her words. So this morning I started the first of the 28 days in the grow planner. Um, and I was a, a little 
daunted. I read and then I saw all these things to write and I didn't want to write on the nice clean page, <laughs> a clean new page. So, um, but I was, and I was trying to think, oh, wow, there's a page for G, a page for R, a page for O and W. How am I going to have time to do all of this? And then I thought, okay, just what can I settle on? And, um, and one of them says uh, to make a poem. Where did it say that? It said, write a poem recognizing Hashem's greatness in nature. So I said, okay, I can do that because I'm out here in nature. I was sitting on the deck here looking at the beautiful pond. And here's what came up. Sitting at the banks, winds wrap around me and over the water, rippling towards me. Standing from afar on a deck, or maybe through a window, a storm rages, churning turbulent waters, yet surging towards me. Dancing on the shore, nary a cloud in the sky, the water's stillness as glass, as a mirror, belies the constant movement towards me, always flowing constantly towards me. In gratefulness, I lift my hands, breathing in, recognizing the Ruach of the Almighty, always directing the flow of blessing towards me. In oneness, I bow to the Creator and will, wish, want to always be aware of the, His presence and constant flow of blessing towards me. Amen. Amen. And that is an Asha's file. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we are all, each of us, weaving our tapestry with our unique talents. Our, like Bubby Labor with her wool, with her yarn, Esther with her words. Each of you, think about how are you weaving Hashem's tapestry? You are part of this grand design. Thank you, Mickey, for telling your story and Julie for being a part of this vision and asking that we bring JGR to the women. And this Shabbos, we had a JGR retreat for women. What was really special was women of different ages, different backgrounds. Do you think it mattered? Our souls intertwined. That's the word, thank you. And we created a new tapestry this week that's part of God's grand, magnificent tapestry. And I wanna thank each of you who are here today, everyone who contributed their stories to this beautiful book. So those stories will not be forgotten and then many more women and girls can connect through your stories. So I just wanna thank all the people. And this is just the first of a program that will highlight women of valor through the ages. So we cannot read all the tributes today. I want to thank Shoshana Fox, who's on, who, who wrote the most beautiful poem about her mother, who she lost when she was four years old. And for you to share her legacy with us is beyond words. So Shoshana, thank you for your support, for your vision. And uh, may you really feel your mother with you all the time in total oneness. So I wanted to just thank all those people. Um, where does that, where, where's the tributes, Leah? <laughs> One second. Um, Susan Axelrod, Leah Karras, Yecheva Daphna, Ben and Rachel Fetterman, who dedicated the beginning of the book to Henya Fetterman. She is the one that welcomes us into the book, a shlucha of the Rebbe who lost her life way too young this year at age 40, leaving 12 children behind. We know that her soul is with us. And this book didn't couldn't happen any earlier because she she's now part of this book. Um, and I just really, really want to thank all those people, um, Sarah Friedman, Yitzhak and Leah Ganeva, Shoshana Fox, Dr. Laura and Edward and Laura Jacobs, Terry Klein, Gitzel Labor, the Labor family, Lauren Lichtenstein, Norman and Mickey Massian family, Shalom Echanazel Deminkowitz, Ida and David Schottenstein, Rachel Tahir, Goldie Tenenhaus, and Azriel and Chana Wasserman. Thank you for sharing your 
Aisha's Chayel stories and tributes. Um, I want to also mention that this is, you know, this is really number three in a series. Number three is a very strong number. It's Chazaka, it's strength. This book is going to give us renewed strength in our role as Jewish women. Why? Because the first book is One More Light. This is about the first mitzvah that a Jewish girl does when she's just about three years old. She lights her candles. So this is going to be the book that you get your three-year-olds so, <laughs> and the three-year-old within all of us or anyone who lights Shabbos candles. Of course, you can enjoy the writings of Jewish women and girls about lighting candles. And then what do we love to do on Shabbat? We love to sing voices in harmony. And that's what we're about to do with our singer, Chaya Bracha Rubin. This is the second book, Leia designed and Sipora also did a lot of work on this book. It is seven chapters and seven, seven topics with Jewish songs that you can sing on Shabbat. And then of course, the song for the Jewish woman, the Aisha Schail is book number three. So this is the series. They all are colored, beautiful books that will decorate your shelves and your souls. And with that, it's time to sing Voices in Harmony. It gives me great pleasure to invite Chaya Bracha Rubin, a dear friend and inspiration for so many women, to sing two of her songs that are in the book because every chapter has a meaningful melody connected to the verse. Because we want our readers to embody these verses through song, through art, through storytelling. And so you will get to hear two of these songs and a third one, which is very, very special, related to the, to the book. And uh, wait, I need to, um, so just give us two minutes. We'll just take a two minute break to do some tech here. I also have a little speaker in case. I don't know if your speakers are gonna work better. Go ahead, you do it. It's connected. Okay, so who's ready to sing now? Oh, wow, Rachel was here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. I think I'll go and move this a little. Thank you. Yeah, no. We're going to do another program. So we're going to get started, yeah, in a minute or so. And I can give a little bit of a background to this song, Aisha's Chayel. So for those of you who know me, you know, you'll this will sound familiar. Hello. And for those of you who are meeting me for the first time, I would like to share. Um, I actually didn't grow up Torah observant. Um, I was born to a Jewish mother, but I just didn't realize the extent of the depth of my heritage. Um, I didn't, I thought that being Jewish, Jewish was a choice and I didn't have any Hebrew school background. I didn't, I didn't even know all of these, um, but I started to become observant in college and I went to a program that summer. Like when I first, my first, after my first Rosh Hashanah, I was learning with the Rebetzin, the Chabad Shlacha of Penn State, Sarah Itamaretsky. And that summer, I went to a program now called the Jewish Studies Fellowship, but at the time it was called the Ivy League Torah Studies Program. And Bela and Rabbi Hecht are the, uh, you know, they head the program. And so one day after lunch, Bela Hecht asked me, you know, oh, Chaya Bracha, or at the time I was going by my English name. And she said, oh, what, what do you like to do in your spare time? Like she was just getting to know me a little bit. I said, well, actually, I am in a band. I love singing and I write songs. I've been writing since I was a teenager. And she was like, well, what kind of music do you play? And I speaking to her about it. And then she said, you know, you should try to write Jewish songs. And I thought to myself, yeah, that's, that's true. But I, I didn't know where to start. I didn't grow up listening to Jewish music. I had no, the only background I had in terms of Jewish music was 
was prayers, was davening that the little bit that I had at summer camp. And so every, every Shabbos, of course, we were at this program for about a month. I think it was either a four weeks or six week program. Um, we would sing the Aisha's Chayel and we learned a little bit about it. And it was just a tune that I had in my head, you know, just like benching, you know, the Berkha Hamazon tunes. And one day we were on a, our way to a Shabbaton in Mansi, this group of newly, like many newly observant girls. Um, basically it was a, is a stipend program where at the end of the program, we would, we had to write a, a very in-depth paper, like a research paper. So it was actually a, a, a summer job as well as a learning program. Anyway, so we were on our way to the Shabbaton in Muncie and Bela stopped the van before I got in, before we left. And she said, hi, Bracha, I must speak to hi, Bracha. She said, hi, Bracha, you need to write a song for a bas mitzvah girl. And I said, what? <laughs> she said, we have a girl, a very special girl that's, you know, connected to our camp. Um, her family had been going through some challenges and they were making a bas mitzvah for her that summer in camp. And, and so she said, maybe you can write a song, a bas mitzvah song for her. And so I, on the way from this place, you know, on the way from, it was around Kingston, Pennsylvania to Muncie, I wrote this song, Aisha's Kyle. So it's actually the first Jewish song I ever wrote. And I took the words, I mean, I took the tune of Aisha's Kyle and I wrote my own words connecting to the idea of what does it mean to be an Aisha's Kyle, starting from the time that a girl is young. So as I sing, I hope you can picture your own, if you have a family, your own children in your life and as they grew and, um, and otherwise, you know, just to think about the process of what it really means to become an Aisha's Kyle. You know what, maybe I'll double check. Does every, can everyone hear okay? Or is it still? Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, you could hear all right. Okay, let me see. Actually, it says here, because it's not playing on the speaker, but maybe just one minute. It says other devices. Okay, so I'll make sure to connect it. Or I can just play from my phone if it's loud enough for them. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. There's always you. tech to set up. <laughs> so thanks for your patience, everyone. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aishas Chayol, Aishas Chayol, your mother sang to you as a child, you'll be an Aishas Chayol. Aishas Chayol, Aishas Chayol, your mother sang to you as a child, you'll be an Aishas Chayol. For saying the Shema without being told, washing Nagel Vassar though the water's cold, and lighting Shabbos candles at three years old, you heard Ko Hakabo. Aishis Chayo, Aishis Chayo, your mother sang to you as a child, you'll be an Aishis Chayo. Aishis Chayo, Aishis Chayo, your mother sang to you as a child, you'll be an Aishis Chayo. For taking on new mitzvot every day, blessing Hashem in all your ways, and helping out your family, come what may, you heard your tati say. Aishis Chayo, Aishis Chayo, you're growing all the while into an Aishis Chayo. Aishis Chayo, Aishis Chayo, you're growing all the while into an Aishis Chayo. She opens her mouth with wisdom, the teaching of kindness is on her tongue 
and smiles toward the future. Although she's young, a God fearing woman is this one. Oh, Ashes Kayo, Ashes Kayo, you're no longer a child. You're in a wishes high oh wishes high no longer a child you're in a now, I also have to mention, um, Sipora, I met you when you were a JG camper, JGR camper, and I literally was crying as you were speaking because you spoke so beautifully and you truly have become an Asia's high. I'm so, yes. I was yes. so impressed by your beautiful, beautiful words. And as, of course, you know, at the end of the song, it says, she, um, although she's uh, a God-fearing woman, is this one. And I love how you said that the yira is related to, to see, to, you know, that we really see Hashem in everything that we do. Now, this song is also what I would think of as a bas mitzvah song. Really, it's talking about, but really it's ap applicable anytime, talking about the three mitzvahs of a Jewish woman. And it's called Eternally Bright. And it's also based on a song um, a already existing Jewish tune. So hopefully as I sing, you'll be able to listen and hear and just think about the, these mitzvahs in your own life. Now, luckily these are these lyrics are right in the book and I'm so excited to get my copy. So please feel free to, you know, contact Nechama. I think it's available on Amazon right now. Page 241. Okay. So this song is called Eternally Bright. And please sing along if you are so inclined. <laughs> A tiny flame ignited late Friday afternoon, standing in front of her little love, Shabbos is coming soon. Waving her hands gracefully, she brings Shabbos to her home. Light, majestic, full of Raha and Shalom. So precious and so unique, the mitzvahs of Nose Yisrael. They fill us with chaos, shining eternally bright. My dear sisters, more than we know, the power we have to transform ourselves and our homes into a mikdash me'at. A bowl of fluffy challah so it grows. She pulls a small piece away with a bra Separated for Hashem, she gives her first and best to him, thinking her food. Instead of those, so precious, so unique. It fills with shining eternally bright. My dear 
greater sisters more than we all. The power we have transform ourselves and our hearts into a mikdash mehad. Her action, speech, behavior, and more. The Torah is her guide. Gracefully and modestly, royalty from the bride. Bring the chas to Hashem. More than you can imagine, Hashem and wars for us, more than you can fathom. So precious, so unique, the pistol of Israel, they fill us with Shining eternally bright, dear sisters, more than we the power we have to transform ourselves and our hearts into a mikdash Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. And the last song that we're seeing today is actually a beautiful, very well known Zmira song. Um, it's called Bilvavi, and I just want to read the translation because in the song, Eternally Bright, we said how we're making a mikdash me'at. And for anyone who's Hebrew isn't their first language, mikdash me'at means a sanctuary in miniature. And this idea that the Lubavitcher Rebbe taught and that we know from Torah is that it's not just that we're, you know, doing these physical actions and creating something in the world in a greater sense, but even this miniature sanctuary. So it's our individual homes, but it's also within ourselves, within each person is this idea of a miniature sanctuary, a mikdash na'at. So this song, Bilvavi, actually speaks about, I'll read the translation. It says, I will build a tabernacle or a mishkan in my heart to glorify Hashem's honor. And I will place in an altar to an, an altar in the tabernacle dedicated to Hashem, Hashem's splendor, his divine rays of splendor. And for this eternal constant flame, I will take upon myself the fire that fueled the binding of Isaac. And as a sacrifice, I will offer Hashem my soul, my unique soul. Meaning that when we really get a chance to learn in depth, like the verses of Asia's Kyle that this book will help us learn, um, or just in general, thinking about what it means to be a Jewish woman, it should fill us with this fire, a passion, a joy, a simcha, a warmth, right? And that that eternal flame is going to burn constantly within us. So without further ado. Um, Thank you. 
Take the lessons of Boishas Bible to heart and be blessed. Begashmias, Baruchmias, and with all our families with lots of health and happiness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. You really touched our souls, Chaybracha. And I think we all feel a little bit more connected to our essence, to that sanctuary within all of us. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. May we discover the woman of valor within and know that we are Hashem's woman of valor and he's always singing the song to us. Thank you, everyone, for joining and looking forward to future Weaving the Tapestry programs where we highlight Jewish women through history. Thank you, Carol, for joining us. Sipora, thank you for moderating <laughs> and Barbara and Haviva, Yosef, <coughs> Sherni, and everyone else that was already here. I'm gonna...